Hi guys, this is Tarquin coming back with part 2 of my tutorial series, and this time I have changed the module to actually 1.5 because it frankly makes a lot more sense and is going to be more demonstrative, <laughs> and it's also going to allow me to highlight some of the differences that I've made, and I'm gesturing with my hands as if I have a camera on me, although I do not. But what we're going to do now is jump into the troop editor, which is where all the magic happens. Now, first of all, there are 3,000 characters in here. The vast majority of them are not going to be of interest to you. They're characters like village elders that look different, various crooks, people in tournaments, a, a ton of ladies. Like, I mean, half of these people are not lords, don't do anything at all. Except for, I mean, you know, exist and have clothes on, which is what these items up in the corner are. Now, if you wanted the ladies to all be dressed in plate armor, for example, you could go through here and give Sarah Buckler a bassinet. You would hit add selected items to inventory. You could give her a steel shield to wear on her back. And you could go ahead and give her a surcoat over mail. You would run up to that court dress, not at all suitable for her, delete it from the inventory, as well as, oh, well, you can leave her boots on. So now she is going to look like a boss in a helmet. We would just hit update troop, and then bam. Now Sarah Buckler has that. If we wanted to give her a sword, we know that arming swords, because, why do we know this? Because you have to look at a million <laughs> of these numbers, but 986 is a nice medium tier army sword, so we'd go ahead and give that to her. Make sure to update again, of course, before you leave the troop line, otherwise it won't be saved. Then we can go and give Kalaka Jamo, uh, say, a castle forged army sword as well, as his a rock that he spawns with, which is pretty bad compared to one, so we'll just take that off of him. And it's as simple as a couple of clicks, and now Kalaka Jamo has his arming sword, and Sarya Buckler is a pretty badass lady, and no one better mess with her. Now, if we wanted to change anything else about her that is totally irrelevant, we could, but we're about to get into some relevant things. Now, up here at the top, you have where your cell swords, and by that, I don't mean the SSC cell swords, I mean your classic cell swords, like the ones that you buy in taverns, the ones that upgrade a little bit. And here you see their default items. So if you see the Elite Cell Sword Archer with two power draw, just using a bow and 70 archery skill, and you think that's not elite at all, and they're really expensive, he should have 200 in archery, and maybe call it 10 or 100 in weapon proficiency, rate, maybe, maybe a two in power strike and a five in iron flesh. Go ahead and pump it up to a four power draw. And a bow, not so good. We know that a long bow is about 212, somewhere in there. And we just click down until we see, all right, there we go. Long bow, only one of those in the game. Bam. Now he has his arrows, has his sword, and Akaton, terrible armor. Going to go ahead and take that off and go ahead and get him in some plate. Or, uh, well, chainmail is better. And there you go. Now your elite self sword archer in that few of steps now has... The same level, but greatly increased stats. None of these edits, as I have stressed before, <laughs> uh, only item edits can happen in the middle of the game. Everything that we're doing on this screen, in your troop editor and all the other ones, you have to restart a game for. And most stuff you have to restart a game for before you tweak, which is why it is important to get things the way that you want them first. But if we wanted the elite down it, Dornish Cell Sword Spearmen to be a ton better. You know, we could just go and throw an 8 in Power Strike and give them 30 strength, leave the rest of their items the same, and then when they spawn, they will have those things. Or we could give them 60 strength if we wanted. They would be preposterous and would have a ton of hit points. This is, of course, all changes we are making to the 1.5 module that I don't play anymore. Now... That takes care of just general weird changes, but what we're going to talk about now is not so much those problems at the top. And you see here on the side tons of things like Rodok and so on that we don't see anymore. Names that we know are from the native module. 
but right here at number 259 is where the magic begins. This is a Dornish Levy. We're all familiar with them vaguely because they stay out of the war most of the time and die when they don't. If you want to change the name, here is where you do it. If you wanted it to be Dornish Spearman there, and of course, if you didn't want it to say Dornish Levies when they died or anything else happened, you would say Spearmen, because that is the name that you want to do. And here is where the upgrade path is. Now this can be really awesome. And it's not intuitive, you pretty much have to know the name of the troop that you're looking for. But we can see over here that a Dornish Sergeant is 265. So if you wanted Dornish levies to go directly into Dornish sergeants with nothing in between, you could do that. And if you also wanted Dornish sergeants to upgrade into... Let's see, what's 269? A Dornish knight. You would update there, and then all you would have to do is grab Dornish levies from any place in Dorn, and they would instantly be able to upgrade whenever you got the experience to a knight or to someone else. Now, do you want to do this? No, of course you don't. But this is how you can do interesting things, like allow you to upgrade farmers into levies, which is what I do for my player kingdom. And... So we know C369 is where the levy for the Lostens are, or in general, just your player kingdom, is right here down the, the bottom by the Wildlings. But you take a look at Targaryen Men-at-Arms, blah, 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 blah. But Targaryen Man-at-Arms is their default, 359. So what you would want to do is find the peasants or farmers and... If I had this number in my head, I would be more proud of myself right now, but I don't. And I am sorry for the break in action, but... There we go. Should have done that first. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Mercenary E, Farmer. And these are the farmers that travel around places. And we would just say, Upgrade Path. 360 and say, all right, now you hit update and this farmer is going to be able to go to 360. And we know, of course, that 360 is actually a veteran Targaryen man-at-arms and not 359 like we wanted. So we would correct that with just a little bit of backup and now those farmers that you can rescue from all of those bandits, you can upgrade into Targaryen Man-at-Arms. And if you want to do it to your player kingdom instead, remember, you can just search for the name of the troop there. Pretty simple, 369. So, in addition to 359, we will have 369 and this would allow your farmer to upgrade into both a levy of the player kingdom and what's essentially a levy of the Targaryen kingdom, which are two things that are, ex or two factions rather, that are about impossible to get entry level troops for. And so that is something that you will want to play around with probably in that path. Now, as far as things go here, when I made my Lost in Champions, I went ahead. They start out with plated war horses here and stuff. What I did is delete the war mace, go down to the late 800s. I believe it is for war hammers, but maybe I took them off and see. Uh, there's 885 for a war lance that you can add in, and then well, maybe we could just give them say a castle forged arming sword there. Or that's probably a curved one. Yes. 990. And then we would... If we wanted to give them a better shield, just go ahead and go into the shield section. 
grab them one if we wanted to actually put them on Dothraki Cataphracts and make a character like that as your player kingdom, then all you would have to do is go ahead and throw them on a Dothraki Cataphract, update the troop, and now your heavy knights would be like that. If you want to totally pimp their ride, you jump them into 10 power strike and iron flesh, you can put them into 500 and one-handed proficiency if you want to be absurd. You can do anything you want, but you shouldn't. You should keep everything <laughs> sort of balanced. What I'm going to do right now is demonstrate sort of one of my changes in the form of elite ironborn retainers. Now we see from their stats here in game that they have three power strike, four power throw, five athletics, and then 180 in their stats. And what I did is, and uh, that they have uh, 14 strength. Now here are my elite ironborn retainers. You notice six in power throw and I increased their throwing to 200 as well as their two-handed weapons and the other items pretty much the same. Another uh, fun one to look at will be say the elite Targaryen longbowman who has four in power draw here. Now in the editor in morgues for the default it is just three in power draw, and their archery is 150 rather than 180. But because I increased almost all of my troops in my personal mod of the veteran longbowman or elite longbowman to 150, I increased the targs once more. And here you see the targ outfit, which of course puts them in plate armor and high quality helmets. If you wanted to give them a war bow instead, you could do that. And if you wanted to put them on horses, you could give them a riding skill and give them a horse and guarantee them a horse and they would ride on one. Speaking of which, guarantees is a good thing to talk about. As we all know from using Northern Sergeants, that is not something that they have, is a shield guarantee. However, it is as easy as one click and he is changing that for 2.0. But all you have to do to change that is go to Troop 289, uh, click on Shield, update the troop, and then your northern sergeants will use the shield that they have in their inventory. This is the same uh, rationale basically as if you want throwing weapons to happen. Now I gave my Dornish sergeants some javelins in my mod. And apparently in <laughs> the 1.5 here as well. And just as I was experimenting earlier on. Now if I want them to absolutely always have javelins, which they don't, we can go to ranged and update that there. Speaking of, unsullied. Now don't pay attention to any of the 1500s and below unsullied. Those are unsullied's in towns. These are the unsullied that you can actually edit, troop number 752. If you want anyone to upgrade into unsullied, say create an unsullied tree, you could Instead of farmers upgrading into whatever, they could upgrade right into Unsullied. Or you could add in troops. That is something that's a lot more complicated. It's much better to edit an existing troop that is not being used for anything. And sort of redirect. But for adding and delete troops, there's a ton of work to do. And it's actually quite complicated. And I hope you can figure it out better than I can. I've had much better success just working with the troops that are in the game and editing their upgrade paths and that sort of thing and their stats. But here's of course the default unsullied stats. If you wanted to make them total professionals and really tough, you could give them 30 strength and 30 agility. You could give them javelins if you wanted. You could give them anything. You could put unsullied on horses if you wanted because that is just how things go. If you wanted to take a troop that isn't really used that much or at all, if you wanted to say upgrade 237, that Rodok troop, and change that, Now that 237 is just an arbitrary choice, but if you were to change everything about this, you'd keep the troop ID and you would just change the name that shows up to say Unsullied Recruit and then you would change this to Unsullied Recruits. Then you would go ahead and take out all of the items that they have on 
go ahead and put on unsullied armor on them or whatever and then give them much lower stats or whichever one that you wanted and that sort of thing. They all show up as the faction of Kohor, which is funny, but makes no difference as far as I know. Because I don't think Kohor would spawn with any of them anyway. But I'm pretty sure that that would function. Now, you don't want to do that with prison guards and stuff like that, because that might lead to some bugs in the game. However, I do not know, and it's possible that it would function perfectly. But I haven't done things like that. Now we are going to come to Companions, and um, da -da -da. Mavros, apparently that won't work. Well, I have to now try to remember where Companions are. They are kind of deep in the list, and not at an entirely intuitive place. Sorry about this, um, uh, but basically you jump down pretty far. Am I gone too far? No, here we go. It's at 1525 that your heroes are at. Now... When we say Alan, name used to be Giannis, and in my mod is Giannis, so you would change his name there to Giannis, and you would change his name here to Giannis, and then you would update him. If you wanted him to start out as Sir Giannis, or whatever, or you wanted to change any of their names fundamentally at the beginning of the game, you could do that. If I wanted uh, Sathos to be changed back to Colin the Mute, I could do that if I wanted Carver to be Carver the Mad. All you would have to do is say Carver the Mad. You always have to do a, you always want to do a plural even if it's not necessary. And there, Carver the Mad. And then if you wanted him to start out with some Dornish heavy armor, bam, with a ton of power strike because he's crazy, and then you update him, and he is that way. Now we are going to come to Lord Editing. Lord Editing is fraught with peril because they are going to be really tough forever. Now, this is default Rob Stark. My Rob Stark has like 5 in Pathfinding. Pathfinding is very, very scary to give to NPC Lords because it's amazing. You can also jack his training up to 10. Why not his wound treatment up to 8, say? Um, hell, why not give him 8 Pathfinding and give him 90 Charisma? It won't break the game. And I don't think I would try to go over 100 in any of the primary stats. And you definitely don't want to try to overstack the other abilities. They won't go over 10 in this mode. But you see he's marked here as a hero because he is the Lord. You can change his troops and everything like that. And also, if you wanted to change the faction that troops start out with, say Sir Eustace Hunter of the Vale, if you wanted to just give him and the places that he's assigned to to the Reach at the very beginning of the game, you could do that and assign him there. Now, don't do things like that. It's probably going to break stuff. But this is how you edit Lords. And if you want to change Sir Walder Frey to being much better, then you can do that. He's already a pretty powerful Lord as far as things go. And yes, this is also where... All the other troops are. The kings are at the top, all the way down to Calpono, and then it goes into the lords by uh, kingdom. So, Lord Sebastian Errol, we know that's the Stormlands, and it tells us so right here on the screen, and just all the way down. So, Bryce Caron, it, the lord famous for the longbowmen, Caron of Nightsong, we could take him up to 10 leadership if we really wanted him to get some cool stuff and that sort of thing. But, Yes, I feel like that is a good enough introduction, sort of, to troops. Um, if you want people to be considered mounted, that will be for the purpose of their movement on the map. You can go ahead and click that. And unkillable is something that you can do 
Uh, hero is what you want for lords, of course, but if you wanted to, say, make all of your Unsullied immortal, then, well, you would do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. These Unsullied are hero because they are actually just the people that are NPCs. You don't want to make people that are supposed to be fighting into NPCs unless they're special, like companions are. Now, if you think Garrett Longley should start with a better bow than a long bow, you can only give him a war bow. You cannot give items with modifiers through Morg's text editor. So you can't just start people out with masterwork everything. Won't work that way. But if you did want to give him a horse and five in riding, we know that... Okay. Bam. We could go ahead and throw him on a Dothraki Cataphract Warhorse and update his troop, and then Garrett Longley would come with a longbow and a Dothraki Cataphract War Horse when you hired him for 900 coins. All of these are changes that you can make, but as always, don't do stupid things and make it super unbalanced because the game is not fun unless it's balanced. But the great thing about changing the Westerosi is that there aren't too many of them. If you just want to change the knights and the heavy knights and that sort of thing, and what I mainly did is move pretty much all of the Power Strike up to 5 and Iron Flesh to 6, try to upgrade their Athletics and their Shield a little bit, just that sort of thing, for all the Heavy Knights. Also, if you don't like that people are on terrible horses a lot of the time, like, uh, say, Northern Knights have Destriers, if you wanted them to have better horses, you would want to delete all of the Destriers from their inventory. And then give them, say, a couple of chainmail destriers instead, and then they would automatically spawn with that. If you wanted to give the Northern Knights tin and iron flesh, of course, once again, just repeating myself a little bit. But these are the sorts of things. Now, if you change troop level to increase the cost to make it fair on you, you need to increase some of their stats as far as skills go. I would recommend sinking it just into Weapon Master, say, if you wanted to make Northern Knights level 35 to make them super awesome and expensive, and increase their skills in other ways. But if you don't, the game will ran end as well. You would, uh, like, say, give them 20 Intellect and 30 Charisma, because that wouldn't matter. Otherwise, it will overflow those skill points or stat points into stuff like strength and agility and you'll get characters that are more strong than you want them to be if you've tweaked everything the way you want you need to make sure that you dump stats into intellect or charisma for your non-player characters uh for your troops i mean so that you won't accidentally get way more strength than you were bargaining for and have a stronger troop than all of that and well that is pretty much all that there is to be said about troops and the rest of this won't take too much longer because... Okay, never mind. Uh, what we, you do now, if assuming we wanted all of the changes that we've made here to stick, we would just say, save changes, there's the timestamp, and we're fine. And of course, the primary change that we've made, besides all the other ones, is making sure that this farmer can upgrade into a Targ Levy 359, or a Targ Man at Arms, and... A player kingdom levy 369 so if you want almost immediate access to those sides of the troop tree that normally you would have to join a kingdom for that you can't just get from any village at all this is the way to do it you go to farmer or uh, peasant and uh, you would just go through and I'm pretty sure I'm not sure which one it is, but you could go with Peasant Woman that you see all the time and actually change and make like a super awesome peasant tr uh, woman tree that turned into Valkyries or something. You know, anything along those lines. And this is the party editor list. This is crazy stuff, and I really never get into it. But if you, say, strongly believe that... What's the castle? It is in the Riverlands. It is Stonehenge. <laughs> if you strongly believe that Stonehenge should be somewhere else, like on the other side of the Red Fork, 
which many people do, and they are correct, of course, that it should be on the other side of the Red Fork, although I didn't change that, you would find Stonehenge here at 139, and although I don't know exactly where you would want it to go, you would just do some trial and error and say, on the y-axis, just say, call it negative 34, and that would move it on the map to that spot, now, where that is, I do not know. That's the trial and error part of modding, but that's how you do it. And as far as everything else in this editor, you can change the castles and where they're at. And I'm pretty sure that's all that's in parties.txt that I know about. Now, there might be more, but... Uh, Essentially, this is where you move them around on the map, and you can rename things if you want. Like, if you want Crofter's Village to be called whatever, then you would just change the name of it. If you... I mean, the names of towns are pretty much right, but, you know, if you wanted to start out role-playing something where you took a castle and renamed it or whatever, if you wanted to rename Bear Island, then you could do a thing like that. And that is just pretty much what Parties is about, as far as I can tell. Party Templates, however, far more interesting. Party Templates is how you change all things. Now, Kingdom 1 is Stormlands. You can see that from the veteran Stormlands, Stormlands Men-at-Arms, this sort of thing. In this drop-down menu, through these uh, five spots, you affect what sort of reinforcements they get. Now you see right here at 281, that is a heavy Stormlands Knight. If you changed all of these to 281, then pretty much all the reinforcements that the Stormlands ever got would be Stormlands Heavy Knights. And you could even roll them to get 20 of them at a time. And you could do that for this one kingdom reinforcement, and every once in a while they would get massive, massive reinforcements. But you could also change their reinforcements to just never give them levies and give them more mid-range people, or even give them people out of faction, anything like that. This is also how you can change uniqueness. Now, we're going to jump down to one of these places. Now, I'm not sure what kingdom level or number 11 is, but for our purpose, that doesn't matter. We can see from this that it's a sellsword kingdom. Now, if you wanted to recreate, say, the Pintoshi Skirmishers and Cataphracts, you would do that in the Troop Editor, edit them in, name them, and then, for the reinforcements for that kingdom, for Pintos, if it happened to be Kingdom 11, not saying it is, you would just go through and say that you changed it to, you know, what used to be the Rodok Veterans, 237. So you would just say, put 237 in... No, it doesn't work that easily, but it does take a very long time to do the party templates editor, but you would just run up to 237 again and increase that, and then the lords of that kingdom would get them as reinforcements in their parties, and you can do that for every single kingdom. Now, the numbers of the kingdoms, that is something that you will get from this next part of the editor, which is factions, and this is how you tell what the kingdoms are. These are the numbers, so it was actually 11 would have been something else, but uh, here is Pentos. If you want to change the color of Pentos, then you do, and here is how you make people go to war. Now, it's important that you change all of the relations to what you need them to be, and this definitely requires happening at the beginning of the game. You can't do it later. So you say, move the veil to negative 0 0.40 with the Westerlands. Update that relation value. Okay, you have to hit that button or else it'll go away. You want to make them at war with the Iron Islands as well, as you I do in my mod, right there. Once you're done with those things in that faction, you have to hit that update faction registry and, or it'll all disappear. Now, that's still not going to make them go to war. What you have to do is go down here in the Westerlands and also change their faction value to a negative amount. 
and then you would go ahead update there and in the Iron Islands as well blah 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 now if you want to get other factions involved like how Pentos jumped into the war the best way is to give them zero relation with some other factions like we could give them okay they have 10 with the Iron Islands but if we gave them zero with Dragonstone and with Dorn and with the Vale and the North and it's entirely possible that over the course of the game they might actually declare war and that's how we got Tyrosh involved well actually they just declared on us because we we're a player kingdom but that's how Pintos got involved in the war and once you update the factions you have to hit that button totally important you have to update each relation value as you change it you need to mirror that relation value for the other kingdoms and then you'll be fine so if you wanted the Stormlands and Dragonstone to actually be pals, not sure if that would work because it's hard-coded as an event for them to go to war. But you can definitely make other people go to war in this uh, screen. And that is how I have the Veil vale involved in the war from the start. That's how we have Dorne involved with the Reach from the start. And these are the changes that you make. Uh, the value, as it says here, you have to set it between 1 and negative 1. And... Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the faction editor. As always, you're going to do a lot of looking once you <laughs> finish things out. And uh, what you do to look is you go to camp. Uh, you still want, uh, I have debug mode turned on to show you the items. But what you can do is go to infinite camp, which I am not clicking because that would put me into infinite camp. But you'll start a game and kick it into infinite camp and then you'll just wait on your screen. Events will still pop up and you'll have to click them like the Stormlands went to war and that sort of thing. But afterwards, you'll just be waiting and waiting and waiting and no one will fight you. And you'll get to see uh, how the factions interact with each other on the map, whether or not you need to go to the Lords of the Iron Islands and say, give them all, say, a plus three in leadership before you get your mod just how you want it. And I hope this has been informative and not totally useless and now I'm going to go ahead and sign off of this video. I don't think I have anything more to teach, <laughs> but I hope this has helped someone. It can be a little daunting at first, but I highly recommend that you make some tweaks to the game. Or actually, I guess there is one last thing that I could show you right now. And going to go ahead and alt enter into this game since we want that and this is how you uh, go change your companions names say you would go to import or export character history and uh, Sir Giannis here he's named Sir Giannis because I exported him but if we wanted to knight Marone here's how we would do it you choose Marone you hit C Export character, you see that he has killed a whole lot of people. Actually, those might be my numbers. I think those were my numbers. We should look at Gurner Pike's numbers really quick if we can. Yeah, those are definitely my numbers. But you can see your companion's numbers eventually anyway. But anyway, what we've done actually is distract ourselves because what we needed to do was, okay, we export the character for Marone and then just going to pop out there and your character folders will be in by default in my documents. You'll just go to Mountain Blade Warband characters and here's a list of all the people I've ever exported or exported. You see Elia Lofston, a character you'll remember perhaps from Once Upon a Time, uh, Lord Alessander Baratheon, Lyra Dark, if you've been with me for a very long time, you'll remember that name, and here, Marone. Now, you don't change the character file name, you do it right here. You would say, Sir Marone of of uh, the of the blood because he, I don't know just to give a name because I was sort of trying to blank there you go and then 
you just jump right back into the game and you would import the character and then bam, all of a sudden his name is Sir Marone of the Blood. And it will be that through the rest of the game. You can change any of your character's names there. And you see now that is how you do that. That is how you knight somebody. That is how you give them epithets. It is through that take an action, import, export character history. Uh, and through that, of course, it's sort of assuming a knowledge of import, export character history, which I guess we can go over really quick. Right now, we just uh, say export character. Queen Celeste Lost and already exists there. And now we will go jump into the text editor. If you wanted to give yourself a ton of money, what you would do is click right here on the money line and just type a bunch of zeros there. Probably not too many, it might break the game, but might not, you never know. If you wanted to give yourself max charisma or 70 charisma, you could do that there. If you wanted to cheat your way up to any level of skill or to test things out, if you want to change your weapon skills, that's all here in the text editor. and yeah, this is how you get, uh, well actually this is an important facet because this is how you get around all those terrible mini events in the game. You just export your character as soon as they happen, you jump in. So assuming I just got one that took a strength away, it would I would have come into this with a strength of 17 right here. All you have to do is hit 18, hit X. It will have said that I've made changes. I'm not sure that I did make any permanent ones, but just in case I did, I'm going to say don't save. But you would say yes, and then you would pop back into the game. I said you would pop back into the game, and then you would just import your character, and then that 17 that we're imagining from a bad event going to be totally taken away, and there. Oh, I did get an intellect point from a weird event earlier which was pretty cool, and I paid 6,000 coins for it, but it was during the 30-day downtime. I think it is something that happens when you run a kingdom, because it was sort of a dispute between some guys. But anyway, that is all, I think, for my editing tutorials. I've, uh, well, I've taught you everything I know. It's a lot of repetitive work, but it's super rewarding. You just you need to go through every troop you want to change and change the de desired values, Sometimes things might turn out bad, but that's part of the experience. You can always edit items. You cannot edit troops after you begin your editing. So leave with that one in my mouth. 37 minutes. Too long-winded on this, but hopefully some of it has been somewhat helpful. Thanks for watching and listening, guys.